welcome back to the channel today i'm just going to do a bit of an update video answer a few questions and yeah update you all where where i am and what's what's going on really a few things have happened which have put a bit of a stop to my plans at the moment so first things first is i want to say a massive massive thank you to everyone that um sent their condolences to uh, me about my nan uh, I said that in the COVID video a couple of videos back that my nan had passed. Um, I really appreciate that. And again, all the comments in that COVID video, I'm slowly answering them all. There were so many. Overall, it went down really well. Uh, there was a few funny comments. There was a few off comments, but, you know, <laughs> rough with a smooth. Like I said, I really do appreciate all the condolences. I'm not on a sympathy hunt or anything like that. I just wanted to say massive thank you and update you all because I did say I was going to be doing a little bit of a cheese tour and I've been listing out because you guys have recommended some really great places of where to go on my cheese tour, like places that have got, you know, like dairy uh, cream, uh, dairy farms and uh cheese makers and all this and that some some great shops which i've made a massive list of and, and put their names of who's uh recommended it so i can give them a shout out when i go there which is i really can't wait to do um and that is in that this time now i'm in a bit of a downtime now between shows so i was going to be doing that now but obviously with the passing of my nan that has taken you know the front and center of course obviously and there's a lot of things going on which i've have to be around for and hang around for um so the brakes have been put on travel at the moment so i'm not doing that i am going to do the cheese tour whether i do it all in one massive you know uh tour as in you know two three four five weeks or something is another thing but i'm probably going to now just break it up into times as i'm passing somewhere i will go in and do that place and then try and do a couple of places in the area because and to be fair most of it isn't in the south that is yeah i don't know i've come back to harlow where you know my family are and everything for arrangements um and yeah i was thinking right well in between the arrangements i'll go off and do something cheesy um but yeah, there's not really much here apart from like restaurants in London and like like Borough Market, Cheese Market, and all this and that. But they're in Central London, and I'm not taking the land yacht into Central London because that's really quite expensive. Um, excuse the hat; the hair is awful. The beard needs a trim, so that's just the best of uh, the best I can do right now because I haven't given it a trim. So um, yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> not said about that i'm kind of like put travel on a hold at the moment so waiting to get everything sorted and then i will be back on the road the next uh place i will be is camper van camp out um which is next month uh yeah in may which is gonna be great can't wait for that it's gonna be good it's gonna be good something i've never thought about and i've been doing van life for you know seven seven and a bit years now but because obviously it's happened now uh, a family member has passed you doesn't you you don't really think about that kind of stuff and what it means to a van lifer now if it is a close family member then you might have to be in an area like i am now now i'm normal to this area this is my local area and i've wild camped in in harlow for you know umpteen nights that hundreds of nights um I'm guessing there. I'm just guessing there. Don't all come at me hundreds of nights. Um, but it does put the thing of, uh, and maybe the thought that if, you know, and we don't want to talk about it and we don't want to, you know, think about it, but if one of your, if you are full time and one of your close family members does pass, are you going to be needed and called upon to help arrangements and be there for the other family members and to support and to, you know, which is rightly so. Which then presupposes a question of, do you then go to a campsite because you don't like wild camping? Have you not got the uh, capabilities to wild camp, like as in solar and batteries and everything, um, because you're not moving around so much? Is there many spaces around that area that you are that you could potentially have to go to um, to park? Uh, is there campsites in the area? Have you got a little fund? For them campsites because i mean mine i'm probably going to be floating around this area for about two three weeks um because of arrangements take time this takes time that takes time you know so it's not just a one or two night stop it's it's quite a quite a drawn out thing 
and I've never I've never thought about it. I'm only thinking about it now because I'm in it and I'm doing it. Again, it's not like a all oh, you know, this is a bad situation for me and I'm I'm in dire straits or anything because, you know, all right, the passing of my nan is not nice and I understand and that's all all real and that's sad and I'm dealing with that, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the actual implications of being a van life and not having an address and then having to be in an area if you're not used to wild camping or you're not equipped to wild camp or just going to a campsite for two or three weeks you're going to need some money you're going to need some preparations you're going to just one of them things to think about and and i it does make me think about how many other situations out there haven't i thought about because i haven't come across you know and then it's like you don't know until you know um so yeah it just made me thought i, I mean I'm, I'm, i'd like to know um if you if you're a full timer and you've come across a situation in your own life which you thought you we never thought about and it just then sprung on you and you're like okay I'm in this now you got to deal with it you got to figure it out when you never in your wildest dreams imagined that scenario and yeah drop them in the comments because I'd love to like kind of discuss on this further and you know kind of think about them unforeseen things that some of you might some of you must have come across um because i'm not going to be the first that's, that's, that's dealt with this but it just never I, i've never heard it spoke about i've never heard it mentioned or anything and, and yeah just quite a quite an interesting one to be fair um i did have some questions um on uh, to go through so i thought i'd answer a few of them and then just update you about where i'm going to be and what i'm going to be doing so i'm going to be going to camp out next that'll be the next one and then in between those because um, then i'm at the warner shows i've got a few warner shows all the talks which are going to be good uh cameraman camp out. i think the tickets are still available i will link it in the description below if you haven't got your tickets make sure you get them chris moyles is going to be there uh he's going to do his um his set on saturday night i believe it's going to be great i'm talking i've got a few talks um i'm going to be talking about europe my first trip to europe if there is any questions you've got for europe or you'd like to know about a europe trip and travel with a big motorhome over to Europe for the first time. I done it for the first time uh, last year. If you've got any questions, then drop them in because I'm still putting that talk together and I want to make it the best talk possible for everyone to get some information out of it. <laughs> Not just a, you know, look, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but yeah, it's good. It's all good. It's, it's a good talk being put together. And then, yeah, I've got all the Warners talks throughout the year. So if you've uh, not booked onto any of them, again, I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure you get on some of them. Uh, later in the year, I've got Scotland. I'm going to go to up to Orkney. Can't wait for that. Going to be going with a load of people with uh, Geeky Phil and the Motorhomer um, community. So there's a lot of us booked onto that. We're all going to be going up to Orkney. That's going to be absolutely great. I can't wait to get up there. And I'm going to try and stay up there as long as I can until my next talk. Um, to try and Because obviously it's going so far, then yeah, it's going to be really, really, really good. So if there's anything around Orkney, around that area that you think I should see, or places to eat, for things to do, again, drop them in the comments. Can't wait for that. Then we're going to have, I think there's a couple more Warner shows. Then we've got the NEC. And then I'm going to be going over to Europe. I'm going to be doing my Europe trip towards the uh, back end of the year, October, November, December. And I am going to be on the hunt for Christmas markets, which I cannot wait for. All that Christmas stuff, all the all the food markets, the street food, the lights, the hopefully a little bit of snow, everything is going to be great. And I'm going to try, this is going to be a bit of a, a, a trial, and, trial and error, I suppose. I'm going to try and get my, my mum, my sister-in-law and my nephew uh, Liam to fly out for a weekend to somewhere snowy so then we can have a big snowball fight basically make snowman get some street food they can stay I'll pick them up from the airport or local to the airport they can stay in my motorhome for a couple of nights and then they'll fly back uh say Monday morning or something that is on the card so I can't wait to do that I don't know which country to do that in I want a bit of snow because I really want to throw so many snowballs at my nephew <laughs> I want to bury him in the snow <laughs> That would be great. That would be really good. So, yeah, if you've got any advice about that, where would be easiest to kind of get them to fly into, get them to pick, pick them up, then, you know, explore a little bit of an area just for a couple of days, nice little town, some street food, some, you know, Christmas markets or something, and then 
kick them back to the airport, basically. Um, then, yeah, let, let me know in the comments below on that one. Um, so that is pretty much my plan for the year, to be fair. There's a few things in between here, going here, there and everywhere. Lots of fishing, lots of fishing for the fishing channel. Uh, if you haven't found that channel yet, that is in the description below. Urban Hookers Fishing. It is, it is growing slowly, um, but yeah, it is uh, a really good. We, me, Luke and Shane have got a lot of plans for that uh, channel this year. And we really are trying to grow it well and grow a nice community over there. So, But I had a few questions I've just picked out recently on, on some of my videos. What do you do when you come back from a day out and your clothes may be wet? Now, again, I get this with fishing. Um, that's why I tend not to, because wet clothes are a problem in a motorhome. home. Uh, problem in a van they really are so i try and do my best to not get wet um i have got like a poncho in my fishing bag if it really does start raining but i've also got all the fishing luggage so and that goes in the garage so i have tarpaulins and as much as i can to try and keep all my gear dry and that's why i don't go out in the rain because i don't want to set up and be it wet already because i've got to take all that back into the garage and then it's just all wet um, my solution to that is wet clothes is in the uh, shower. I hang them up in the shower. Um, I have got a Max fan in there now, but when I didn't have the Max fan, um, I just open up the skylight a crack and then just yeah turn the heating on a little bit and hopefully let that all go out and dry. Um, now I've got the fan in there, I'll just leave the fan open turn it on a little bit and let it circulate air and then yeah hopefully they can drip dry in the shower um if i know i'm going to a laundry in a day or two and this is only a day or two then if they are really ringing wet and there is no way of drying them out then i carry dry bags and this works for smoky clothes as well so if you're at a campsite or meeting up friends and you're around the campfire try and wear the same clothes around the campfire the whole weekend because then when you finish with them and then you're back on the road and you're not around a campfire you can stuff them into a dry bag roll it down lock it up and then all the smoke and smell stays in the, that bag with them clothes only you can then chuck that in the bottom of your wardrobe right next to your washing and then as soon as you go to a laundry you can sort all that out same goes with the wet clothes but they're only for like a day or two because otherwise they start going a bit <laughs> and you don't want that so with the wet clothes i would chuck them in again only a day or two and throw them at the bottom and if i'm going to a laundry and do it that way other than that it's really just a case of yeah in the shower trying to drip dry them uh to be fair but just try and get that moisture out of your motorhome home and van uh next question was why and can you tell me where you have dog bowls because i eat out of dog bowls now um when uh, they are dog bowls don't get me wrong it doesn't say like lassie on it or anything like that they're just stainless steel bowls um and i get them from the range now reason that people, this person's asked why do you why do you uh eat our dog bowls um and that is because they're stainless steel bowls i can put them in the air fryer if i want so if i can i've got a little dish um which i think is like a puppy water bowl to be fair um i've put um I remember I was cooking a uh, load of barbecue food and I was cooking for M from M and Lou, uh, Camper Vibes. Um, I was cooking for Emily and I made some uh, mushrooms, big flat mushrooms because she's vegetarian and I put them in and then put loads of cheese over them, uh, some garlic butter, but they were in the dish and I put that in the air fryer because it's stainless steel, it just can come straight out. Yeah, it's hot, but it doesn't matter. Um, they can go in the oven, they can go in the, under the grill, they can even go on the fire if you really want uh, and use them as like a frying pan if you or to heat something up. So they are so versatile, you can drop them, you can throw them, you could, you could whack them or anything. They're just stainless steel bowls, but they are in the pet section of the range. Um, uh, so, but yeah, they've lasted really well and I love them. And they've got, to be fair, when you're outside and you're in a camp chair and you've got your dinner... You can have one fork, uh, you can have a fork and just hold your bowl. You don't have to like try and balance it or a plate or anything like that. Because they've got the lip, they've got the wall, you can scoop to the edge and then eat. <laughs> it's really easy for one-handed eating whilst in a camping chair, not having to try and put it on your lap or anything like that or on a plate and, and then trying to cut. Just Yeah, the bowl works an absolute treat. 
but go get one and try and tell me it don't. Uh, next one is, can you tell me how you make your videos when driving? Because I got six points on my license and a £200 fine when I was doing this. Do you touch your phone when driving? Don't touch your phone when driving. Don't do that at all. Um, I've got a mount on my dashboard and then I have, uh, which is a camera looking at me. Um, I, and then I've got a mount on the screen, which looks out. Uh, no, I've got, I've got two two mounts i had i did use on the screen i've got two mounts one looking at me and one looking out of the, at the road i start where i am i'm stationary i press both buttons i clap to try and make the audio sync ready for luke to edit make it a bit easier for him to put together and then i just keep going and i keep rolling um with the with the cameras rolling uh keep driving and then when i need to i'll pull pull in press stop or press go again if i need to and yeah that's the way but don't touch anything when you're driving it's just not worth it being a van lifer on your own do you get ever get lonely um no i don't really i mean i, I like interacting with people i like going out for dinner with people um i'm very fine on my own um i've great come uh, i've I, I'm great company for myself to be fair I'm I'm I was a lorry driver before this so I was always on the road on my own um I got you know you put me in a in a room with a, a piece of paper and a pencil and I could just fill hours and hours and hours of time making lists and ideas and plans and this that and the other so I am really lucky like that um there is times when you know you do get you start making plans and you 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 know you because you have been alone for a while and you're like yeah i can't wait to go see so and so can't wait to meet up with my friends and that's really good i talk a lot on the phone to be fair um again lorry drivers they all seem to you know talk to each other a lot um when they're loading unloading or something like that um so i've always got someone to talk to and then to be fair me me uh and a few of my friends, like John and Tash and John and Mandy, so regularly have like a uh, like a WhatsApp video call or a Zoom call, um, you know, because we're all spread out around the country and we're all really good friends. So we'll just, you know, have a video chat. We will say a time and then we'll just, you know, just talk for a couple of hours about what's going on, have a laugh, have a chat, you know, this, that and the other. And yeah, it really, that's how I stay connected. And then I'm, you know, always busy doing stuff and doing this that and the other and talking to people like i talk to tasha a lot because we you know we work together talk to luke a lot because we're doing the videos and, uh, and that with and shane because we do the videos with the fishing so yeah it's just about keeping in touch with people you know if you are if you do get lonely and um, it's something i'm quite lucky i don't suffer from um do get in touch with people you know there's facebook groups there is a lot of groups out there for van lifers do really reach out and just start interacting and start you know i know it can be hard i'm quite an outgoing person so i find it relatively easy um i know some people don't and i understand that but just little steps little steps you know trying to talk to people or talk to your current people that you know and yeah it's just just reach out really if you do get like that um i know it's easier said than done but just take little steps to try and try and uh, help yourself. The last question I've been uh, getting a lot of lately is uh, this is one question, but I've had it in many different ways. If you're looking at uh, if you were looking into a van or a motorhome for weekend use and were about five foot six, <laughs> very specific there, um, and wanted to be able to stand up, what would you look at? Camper van, uh, camper vans or not? Um, especially if you're not using it all the time. Now, I'm net people ask me all the time, what's the best van to get? What's the best motorhome? What's the best this? What's the best camper van? I don't know. That is the honest answer, I, the most honest answer I can give you. I do not know what the best motorhome, camper van, or van is. Because, and no one does. No one does. There might be the most sold motorhome or the most you know sold van the most popular van base chassis engine this that, and the other the most popular layout the most popular this but all that is just on a scale of multiple people not you you need to just think about you so what this motorhome right now is perfect for me there's a few things that you know you are not perfect but on the whole this motorhome is perfect for me but then if you were to give this to someone else it wouldn't be perfect for them 
you know it would there would be things that would be real big red flags for them whereas if you gave me you know if i tried to say me and gadget john swapped i would i would feel very you know it would be a lot smaller of a space for me to go into gadget john's van and then he would get into this and i mean he's had a big motorhome before um and he's downsized because he didn't need it he didn't want it he didn't you know it wasn't the right fit for him and now he's got his van which is a perfect fit for, fit for him so again it's it's all about you and your individual needs and how you're going to live and how you're going to do it i've done a whole video series on this when i was at oak tree and showed you around all the different layouts all the different bed styles all different kitchen layouts everything but i just implore anyone everyone that's thinking about getting a motorhome getting a camper van building their own whether you're going to be a weekend weekend person getting away for the weekend only or you're going to go do a week at a time or you're going to do extended trips or you're going to live in it doesn't really matter they're very big investments they're very pricey so you want to make the right decision and if you're building it yourself you don't be wasting your time building it yourself if you're then going to get it wrong so i implore every single one of you to go out to motorhome dealers motorhome forecourts shows like the warner shows where they've got loads of people uh, loads of dealers uh, local and national they've got even if you're not buying a motorhome and you're building a van you can still come along and see the layouts because there's millions of pounds of r d research that's gone into into the, the 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 shapes the designs the layouts inside their motorhomes so you can take that all for free by having a look at it having a rummage around and then put it into your van if you're building one and again if you are going to be buying a motorhome or a camper van you can get in you can you know sit down on the sofa yep yeah, is this nice can i stand up can i bend down can i swing my arms around is this good and just get a real feel for the layouts and how you're going to use them and then uh, apart from that if you can uh, if you're going to be buying one for a big big price tag I would recommend maybe when you come to an idea of one that you really thinks you, maybe renting it for a weekend or a week. Go on holiday with it, see how it worked. If it costs you, I don't know how much they cost uh, to rent, but if it costs you five hundred pounds to say, and you didn't like it, okay, some of you might think that's five hundred pound wasted, but you haven't had a little holiday out of it, and also you've learned that you didn't like that layout, and that could have saved you, you know, the hassle of spending fifty grand on a motorhome. Um, and then having to then go, mm, don't really like it. Now I've got to try and sell it or, you know, take it back and try and change it, part exit. It's a lot of uh, things. So, yeah, layout is, is key to you. It's personal to you. There is no best motorhome for everyone out there of just, you know, that is the one. Go get that one. It's it's what 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 works for you yeah that was quite a bit of a, a bit of information, I suppose. I didn't think I had much to say today, but I clearly have. <laughs> um yeah, like I say, I'm not really doing much at the moment. I'm going to try and get away for a couple of days and go to a few campsites, maybe uh, do a little review and of a campsite and try and chill out on a campsite here and there. If you've got any ideas for videos or you've got any questions or comments, then please drop them in the comments section below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy.